Good day, everyone. On behalf of BioIT World's Global Web Symposia Series and our sponsor, Agena Bioscience, I'd like to welcome you to Going Beyond EGFR, Evaluating Technologies for Molecular Genetic Testing in Non-Small Cell Lung Cancer. My name is Elizabeth Lamb, and I'm the host and moderator for today's event. Now I'd like to introduce our presenters for today. First is Erwan Pankriash, PhD, PharmD, Department of Molecular Oncology at Strasbourg University Hospital in France. Our second presenter is Dr. Alexander Sartori, Staff Scientist, Scientific Affairs with Agena Bio. Unfortunately, due to changes in his clinic schedule, Dr. Pankriash isn't able to join us. However, foreseeing that this might be a problem, he was kind enough to record his presentation, and I will share that presentation with you now. So, I will today present the evolution of our molecular testing strategy since 2005 and its impacts on our organization from a human, technical, and economical point of view. As you know, the treatment of, uh, of lung cancer has entered a new era since the discovery of EGFR activating mutations and ALK gene rearrangements. And all patients with lung cancer should have molecular testing at the time of diagnosis, mainly those patients with advanced non-small cell lung cancer, to look at the presence or absence of driver mutations or fusion that really change the prognosis with the right directed therapy. There is now a large number of tests that are available for molecular testing. And during the last 15 years, many medical centers have been organized to provide patients with routine assessment of driver mutations and actionable targets. As you know, lung cancer is the most frequent cause of cancer-related death worldwide, with 1.8 million patients that are diagnosed with lung cancer, and 80 to 85 percent are non-small cell lung cancers. More than 50% of these patients present with a metastatic disease with a five-year survival rate below 5%. Routine molecular testing of these tumors is now the standard of care for metastatic patients and is recommended for the identification of genetic alterations. Some of them have been associated with improved progression-free survival or overall survival, like, for example, EGFR activating mutations, but also ALT translocations or HER2 insertions. First-line treatment is guided by the identification of oncogenic drivers, and patients with actionable targets are treated with tyrosine kinase inhibitors targeting EGFR or ALK or MET, for example. Mutations are identified in 45 to 65% of non-small cell lung cancers and in tumor samples, and smoking status as well as ethnicity or gender are significant factors associated with specific frequencies of molecular alterations. Here are presented the molecular profiles of smokers and never smokers. For example, genetically, Smokers are associated with a higher prevalence of curious mutations, whereas EGFR or ALK alterations are more common in never smokers or light smokers. To anticipate the emerging health needs, the Institut National du Cancer in France developed a special program in 2006 to organize molecular testing in France and supported a national network of 28 regional hospital molecular genetics platforms. Their purpose is to offer an innovative molecular test to all patients in the region, regardless of the institution where they are treated, university hospital, cancer centers, or private institutions. The aim was therefore to organize an adequate nationwide network so that tumor samples can be processed rapidly in a centralized unit with which they have organized links. And of course, to guarantee equal access to innovative and existing treatments. Our university hospital in Strasbourg is one of the 28 national platforms dedicated to molecular testing. Every year, we analyze more than 2,000 solid tumor samples at the time of diagnosis or relapse. And as you can see, lung cancer represents more than 50% of this activity with nearly 1,000 solid tumor samples and 200 liquid biopsies analyzed every year. 
We started our molecular testing activity for lung cancer in 2005 with real-time PCR and Sanger sequencing. Ten years later, we developed droplet digital PCR, for, especially for liquid biopsies, and broad-based genomic sequencing at the end of 2015. In 2018, a next seq was implemented in our lab for RNA fusion panel analysis. And today, I will present the evolution of our diagnostic strategy since 2018, when we decided to come back to a targeted multiplex approach with the Massare system, a Malditov based technology. I would like to quickly come back to the different techniques implemented in the laboratory and their limits in terms of analytical sensitivity and the possibility of multiplexing. One of the shortcomings of ultra-sensitive techniques is the limited possibility of multiplexing beyond two or three targets, as with digital PCR. On the contrary, browse-based sequencing techniques generally do not offer sufficient levels of sensitivity to search for subclones in tumor samples. In the routine practice, NGS makes it possible to identify mutations with an L frequency of 3 to 5 percent, but not 1 percent or less. And even if more sensitive barcode techniques have been developed, they are not yet widely used on sequencing platforms for diagnosis. Interestingly, systems like the Massari technology offers the possibility to analyze more than 100 variants per sample in a single run with a limit of detection between 0.1 to 1%. Based on these different technical approach, we developed a global strategy for metastatic non-small cell and cancer testing between 2016 and 2019. And today, I will focus on our strategy for initial diagnosis, which represents the most important part of our daily activity after DNA extraction, quantification and qualification. As you can see here, samples are either analyzed by NGS or by a combination of qPCR, fragment analysis and Sanger sequencing, and it depends on the DNA quantity or quality. In our experience, only 75% of the FFPE samples were eligible for NGS analysis. As you can see on this slide, NGS implementation in our lab had a major impact on our organization with a median time of 48 hours, for example, for uh, library preparation, with four technicians that have been trained for library preparation, 36 hours for sequencing, 12 hours for bioinformatics analysis, and three bioinformaticians have been hired to develop the pipelines. 48 hours, finally, for biological and clinical analysis, and four biologists participate to this activity. Altogether, this resulted in a significant increase in the time to result that correlated with the increase in our platform global activity in hematology and solid tumors of around 8 to 10 percent per year during the last four years. Implementation of NGS testing is challenging from a human, technical and economical point of view. Even if the cost of sequencing per base has decreased during the last 10 years, these new techniques have emerged in the context of increasing concerns about global health care costs. Molecular testing is aimed to guide the prescription of expensive targeted therapies or immunotherapies, and broad-based genomic sequencing has disseminated ahead of demonstrated association with better survival and without economic evaluation. Moreover, in many studies, the costing for quality assessment Bioinformatics pipelines development or data storage was not included. In a recent nationwide French study here presented, the mean cost of NGS for targeted gene panels was estimated to approximately 600 euros. And this raises questions about the biological and clinical efficiency compared to more targeted approaches. There is no evidence that routine use of broad-based genomic sequencing improves survival in large population of patients with advanced non-small cell and cancers treated in the community. And one of the first randomized clinical trials of broad-based genomic sequencing using investigational 
agent, the SHIVA trial, did not find any improvement in progression-free survival. Moreover, in a recent retrospective study published by Caroline Presley at the Ohio State University, the NGS approach was not associated with better survival compared to a routine targeted analysis of EGFR and ALK, as you can see here. Altogether, these technical, clinical, and economical data raise the question about the interests of NGS at the rational strategy for all patients, and especially at the time of initial diagnosis. So today, we will not discuss about the question of relapse, molecular tumor ball, or enrollment of patients in clinical trials, but I will present the technical approach that we have evaluated in 2018 and implemented in our lab last year for initial non-small cell lung cancer molecular testing. Our first objective was to develop a targeted multiplex approach to shorten the turnaround time and reduce the costs without jeopardizing the diagnostic performance. We decided to evaluate the Masara technology, which is an open platform that allows homemade PCR design, as well as validated panels for lung cancer, but also colon and breast tumors or melanoma. We compared the results obtained with the IPLEX HS uh, technology, which I will present in the next slides, to our NGS Amplicon approach. During six months, we tested FFPE samples and liquid biopsies in a retrospective study. And finally, we evaluated the Masara system in the real life during three months in parallel with road-based genomic sequencing. So I will shortly present the technical results as well as the economical evaluation that was based on our 2017 activity where 900 non-small cell lung cancer have been tested. We have identified a BRAF, EGFR, HER2, QRAS, or PIK3CA mutation in 370 samples, and 530 samples were negative for these uh, mutations. So we decided to analyze all samples first with the Massare technique, and negative samples were then tested by fragment analysis for EGFR exon 19 and 20, HER2, exon 20, and MET, exon 14. Then, the remaining negative samples were either analyzed by NGS or MET Sanger sequencing, depending on DNA quality, quantity, or the percentage of tumor cells. I will now shortly present the IPLEX HS technique. The IPLEX workflow begins with the multiplex PCR amplification of the targets, BRAF, EGFR, HER2, QRAS, and PIK3CA for lung panel, for example, and 10 nanograms of starting material per sample. At the end of the PCR step, the nucleotides are dephosphorylated by shrimp alkaline phosphatase. This is followed by the single base extension reaction in which a mix of oligonucleotide extension primers designed to anneal to the amplified DNA fragments are added together with an extension enzyme and mass-modified D-deoxynucleotide terminators. The extension primers anneal directly adjacent to each SNP site to be assayed and are extended and terminated by a single complementary base into the genotyping target site. In one run, we can analyze 10 samples, one positive control, one negative control, with more than 80 targets that are analyzed. Finally, the extension products are desalted, then transferred from the microtiter plate via an automated nano dispenser onto a chip array where they crystallize with a pre spotted MALDI matrix. And the spectrochip array is loaded onto the mass array analyzer where the analyte crystals are irrigated by a laser, inducing desorption and ionization. The positively charged molecules accelerate into a flight tube toward a detector. Separation occurs by time of flight, which is proportional to the mass of the individual molecules. After each laser pulse, the detector records the relative time of flight of each extension product, and the results are displayed automatically using Typer software. The overall processing 
time takes about 10 hours from DNA amplification to data analysis for 10 samples plus one positive and one negative control, with two and a half hours hands-on time for technicians and about 30 minutes to analyze the mass spectrograms for 10 patients. So what about the technical evaluation? To make a long story short, we identified more than 95% of actionable targets identified initially by NGS. And as expected, only rare EGFR exon 19 deletions or per 2 exon 20 insertions were not detected. In the retrospective study, most of the discordant results were observed with frozen samples, probably due to DNA degradation. Interestingly, low quality samples old FFP samples, for example, or cytorich red fixed samples, as well as very low DNA concentration or minimal percentage of tumor cell inferior to 5%, did not affect the amplification and analysis. And we were able to identify mutations in some samples that could not be analyzed by NGS or Sanger sequencing. And what about the impact on the costs? The results presented here were calculated based on our 2017 activity for lung and colon cancer molecular testing, which represents more than 80% of our diagnostic activity. We estimated that Masarai implementation could reduce our cost by nearly 30%, which represents 130,000 euros per year. We initiated this new diagnostic strategy in April 2019, and the economic data are now being evaluated by our administration. Another important aspect was the turnaround time, which reflects the activity of the technicians, engineers, and biologists. As you can see, mass array implementation had a major impact on the workflow time with a significant faster time to result from sample accessioning to reporting of results. 14 days in 2018 and eight days in 2020. Finally, I would like to present some biological data on our non-small cell lung cancer molecular testing with Massare technology. First, negative samples after Massare plus fragment analysis were tested and we could find a rare BRAF EGFR, HER2, QRAS, or PIC3CR mutation in less than 1% of the tumor samples. Massare implementation also had a major impact on our NGS activity with a significant decrease, nearly 35%. Combined fragment analysis could identify some rare EGFR exon 19 and del deletions and HER2 exon 20 insertions. We also confirm that we have no technical limitation with low amount of DNA or degraded sample. We also confirmed a limit of detection of 1% for some variants that were quantified by DDPCR, and we demonstrated that the IPLEX H8 technique was able to detect 30 to 50 copies of mutant in one sample. So, what do we plan for the coming year? We have now implemented the IPLEX HS chemistry for lung cancer, but also colon cancer and melanoma. Our next objective will be to develop RNA analysis on the mass array, especially for MET and, and track analysis. So thank you for your attention and feel free to contact me or my colleagues if you have any questions. Thank you again. If you have any questions, for Dr. Pankriash, if you could chat them to all panelists, and we'll make sure that we forward those along to him for his answer via email. And now we'll move along to our second presenter for today, Dr. Alexander Sartori. Welcome, Dr. Sartori. The presenter ball is yours. And now we'll move along to our second presenter for today, Dr. Alexander Sartori. Welcome, Dr. Sartori. The presenter ball is yours. All right. Thanks, Elizabeth. Yeah. First, I want to thank Dr. Pankraj for his excellent overview about the evaluation of the mass ray system, even if he can't hear us live today. So his evaluation of the mass ray system in their oncology routine lab in Strasbourg. But I'm also glad about the opportunity to share some more information about the mass ray system and especially the many applications that are possible on this technology. 
As introduced already, my name is Alexander Satori and I'm with the GINA Biosciences uh, Scientific Affairs team. And I'm speaking to you today from Hamburg, Germany. Agena Bioscience manufactures the mass array system. It is the only mass spectrometer in the market for the detection of nucleic acids, both DNA and RNA, as we just heard. We also develop a large number of applications for this technology and software. Agena is headquartered in San Diego, California, and it operates sales offices in Brisbane, Australia, in Shanghai, China, and as uh, we just heard, um, here in Germany. So the mass array technology itself is not the focus of today. However, if, um, if you want to learn more about how it functions, about its major benefits being, for instance, operational cost, scalability, flexibility, accuracy, and sensitivity, just to name a few, please visit our, ho um, our homepage at aginabio.com where you can uh, see a detailed video about the technology and also obtain other information such as white papers and technical information. As Dr. Pankraj in his presentation just mentioned, the detection principle, the underlying detection principle for the mass array actually is very simple. And um, I just want to just want to repeat the principle again. For the mass array being a targeted approach, you start off with a classical with a tar with a with a PCR amplification to generate all amplicons covering the variance to be interrogated in a multiplex manner. In a second step, a single base extend reaction is performed that adds the missing base to the loci of interest. So you have a primer that just ends before the questionable, the, the, let's say, the variant, um, and then a uh, the missing base is incorporated, whether it's a wild type or a mutant, so it's a different base that gets incorporated. And as shown, um, and I think I can also have a laser pointer, yes. So, um, and, as, and as shown in, in this plot here at the bottom, the reaction products slightly differ by molecular mass which uh, allows us to differentiate between um, the wild type and the variant after detection on the mass array. So based on this principle, we at the beginner provide a number of applications um, being, uh, um, being a pharmacogenomics, liquid biopsy, tumor profiling, SARS-CoV-2. I want to mention a little bit about that uh, in a minute. Sample integrity, hereditary genetics, chimerism, and blood typing. Although today's topic is oncology, I want to take the opportunity to also mention a GINA solution to fight COVID-19 with a SARS-CoV-2 panel. The panel is for in vitro diagnostic use and currently under FDA review in the US. And for Europe, we are working with an authorized, authorized representative to get CE marking for the SARS-CoV-2 panel. The panel will be available for sale in Europe upon receiving the CE mark. And um, if we go to what the panel can do, it's besides, uh, besides it's highly specific in, in, in terms of design, we target the nucleocapsid gene and the, o, um, the ORF1 AB regions. So besides that uh, specificity, the technology is very flexible um, in terms of scalability. Further, the panel um, and operational costs are really competitive. And last but not least, Agena is prepared to supply any required amount of reagents to match even the highest throughput requirements. On the website, Agena's website that I also mentioned before, you can find and download more information on the SARS-CoV-2 panel. And you can also, uh, for instance, download a white paper that represents an LOD study in which the sensitivity of the panel um, was demonstrated being 10 copies, um, viral copies, or even, or even below. With this, I want to come back to our topic of today, to oncology. So for, uh, for Agena, an oncology and liquid biopsy workflow where precious samples are being analyzed also always requires the upfront assessment of the sample in terms of quality, quantity, 
security and identity, for instance. So these solutions are summarized in the sample integrity product family that uh, Gina offers. So for instance, for an FFPE sample, you want to know the level of DNA degradation in the sample before you start analyzing the actual sample. Or for a liquid biopsy, you need to ensure that sufficient molecules are added to the reaction to meet your sensitivity expectations. For instance, for a 0.1% sensitivity, you need to add at least 10 nanograms or 3,000 copies of intact CF, so circulating DNA, to the analysis. The principle of our chemistry was um, explained prior. It is the IPLEX Pro chemistry, and Dr. Pankrash also introduced us to the higher sensitive um, uh, type, uh, the higher sensitive, higher sensitive version of the IPLEX chemistry called IPLEX HS, which stands for high sensitivity, which um, the Strasbourg lab implemented for the testing, for the routine testing of of, um, of tissue, uh, so of biopsies of tissue material with a sensitivity uh, limit of detection of down to 1%. However, um, if you want to work with, alt with uh, liquid biopsy, Agena also offers the so-called ultra-seq chemistry that, um, that provides a limit of detection of down to 0.1%. So these two, um, these two chemistries, IPLEX HS and UltraSeq, um, have in common that they are based on single multiplex reactions. So you enter only your precious material once into a single reaction. It's still um, highly multiplexed, and with 10 nanograms of input amount, you add uh, sufficient material for running the analysis and get 10 to even 100 mutations per sample. So for these two named um, technologies or chemistries, IPLEX HS and UltraSeq, Agena offers a, um, a number of, of pre-designed and validated panels, targeted panels, um, especially, um, or for example, for non-small cell lung cancer, we do have the IPLEX HS lung panel and the UltraSeq lung panel. They both uh, interrogate um, actionable mutations in BRAF, EGFR, HER2, KRAS, and PIK3CA, um, and are almost uh, to 100% overlapping in content. You can see 70 markers are interrogated for the tissue-based panel and 74 for the liquid biopsy panel. And for liquid biopsy, we also have an EGFR-focused panel that interrogates just the major EGFR, exon 19, 20, and 21, uh, variants. So the UltraSeq lung and the UltraSeq EGFR panel can be operated nicely together. For instance, um, as the smaller panel is also more co cost effective, you could start with that panel and only if you cannot detect any of the included mutations, you can, you can um, use the same PCR product. So you don't have to start, you, um, you don't have to enter more samples. You can just use your leftovers and run the, the larger panel from uh, from your already amplified product. In this work that's been done by Cleveland Clinic and was, um, and was presented at the AMP meeting 2019 in Baltimore, uh, the group was evaluating the, the, the mass array versus the NGS. And in this study, sample types like FFPE, fine needle aspirates, and pleural fluids were used with a tumor content between 10 and 90% percent. And for NGS, 300 nanograms were used as input amount and for the mass rate, 20 nanograms, which is a little bit more than what we recommend. And as a result, um, we, um, the, the group found 100 percent concordance for the results and um, with the mass rate variance down to below 1 percent, so between uh, below 1 percent and 74 percent could be detected. So the conclusion, the major conclusions of this study are um, summarized here in, in the blue, in the blue um, section. And um, to summarize even that, we can say the mass array system provides an alternative method for limited sample input in a single day with minimal hands-on uh, hands analysis time 
at low cost. This is what the authors found and what also Dr. Pankraj um, confirmed um, before. So this, this was demonstrating work for non-small cell lung cancer. As we heard already, um, Agena also offers panels for colorectal cancer. And you see the, um, you see the content of the IPLEX HS colon panel and the ultra colon panel, again, for the upper one for uh, the detection in tissue and the lower one for work in, in liquid biopsy um, represented here with 86 or 107 um, variants respectively in um, BRAF, EGFR, KRAS, NRAS, and PIK3CA. And last but not least, um, the content of the melanoma panels following the same chemistries are listed here where you, from a single sample, from a single um, reaction, you interrogate 97 um, or 61 mutations with the tissue or liquid biopsy-based panel. So as the previous presentation um, from Dr. Pankraj and um, also the work from the Cleveland group was more focusing around um, tissue um, analysis, you may wonder what the actual sensitivity of the liquid biopsy ultra-seq chemistry is. And for that purpose, we jointly ran a study that also was presented last year at the AMP meeting in Baltimore. There was a global study with five laboratories where we were using uh, commercial reference material from Seracare at various allelic frequencies, so from 2% to 1%, uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, down to 0.1%. Um, and uh, yeah, and ran and, and ran um, replicates of, of that material across all all the five uh, lab laboratories, and the finding was that for the major, um, for the most frequent variants in non-small cell lung cancer, being the EGFR deletion, the EGFR T790M resistance marker, and the EGFR L858R, um, across across the entire study, sensitivities between 0.1 and 0.5% were achieved with high um, reproducibility and at very high specificity being very close to 100%. So based on, um, I mean, based on, on the superior sensitivity of the, of the ultra-C chemistry on the mass array system and um, also the large menu that it allows, um, we, we, um, we also want to um, want to show this this poster that was presented at the IA, um, IASLC meeting in Barcelona in 2019, where the um, Roche Cobas um, sorry where the Roche Cobas EGFR mutation test version two was compared with the ultra seq lung panel, and uh, in this study, um, 100 samples were actually compared between the two platforms with the input amount for ultra -seek lung being um, on average just, just below nine nanograms, whereas we were following the standard COBAS protocol with an input amount or in, input volume of 70 microliters being or representing around about 25 nanograms of input. And uh, with this comparison, 80, the concordance for, for the EGFR markers was 85%. But when in a subset of samples of 63 samples, we were lowering the input or harmonizing the input on the roche Cobra system towards what was entered for the mass ray for the ultra seq lung panel, so using the same input amount of nine nanograms for both platforms, what we then could find is how the um, superior sensitivity pays off by detecting more mutations using the mass ray or the ultra seq chemistry and um, for instance, we could detect 50% more um, T790M resistance markers with a mass array. And in addition to the larger menu, so to the fact that we, um, the, the lung panel also interrogates panel in, in other genes, we could find genes that the roche test certainly could not find, being in KRAS and BRAF. Dr. Pankras already um, mentioned that um, the turnaround time of the mass ray 
was one of the factors um, having them implement the technology in their lab, in their routine lab in Strasbourg. So here you can see a, um, a comparison of various um, workflows at a glance. And I want to remind you about the uh, relatively short turnaround time of the mass ray. Um, as we heard, it's, it's about um, 10 hours. So it, you can, depending on the application, it can also be a bit shorter. But um, so you, you will certainly have your results on the next day with minimal hands-on time that is required. And I also want to mention that certainly there's no, bioinformati uh, no bioinformatics required at all. So while detecting, while the mass ray is detecting um, the, the um, is detecting the reaction product is already it already generates the allele calls and by clicking after the run onto a single button you will get an automated rep report that that provides all all information that are required there's also um, many other labs um, who were and are evaluating the, the mass ray um, here I want to share at the end the case study from a large lab in North America. Unfortunately, I cannot name the lab uh, today yet. Um, this lab was also evaluating and comparing the mass ray against NGS. And in the, blue box, uh, in the blue box, you see the considerations and criteria that they were using, um, among them being number of uh, existing tests, uh, the, the existing cost um, by NGS and see if, if we can do better with the mass ray the analytical sensitivity, the turnaround time, uh, the flexibility, for instance, by running DNA and, and, and RNA targets and, um, and some more. And the major finding of that, of, that, uh, of that lab was indeed confirming that the turnaround time is, is significantly shorter. Here, the mass rate turnaround time is given three, three days, which is very conservative and also including certainly sample, sample prep and um, probably also um, um, pooling samples, so wait, waiting for samples to, to be analyzed. Uh, this group could increase their capacity um, with a mass ray from 40 samples to over 200 uh, samples a week. And then in terms of cost, they could also confirm what we heard before by Dr. Pancras, that indeed uh, the cost savings were significant. So or a period of five years, a million, or up to, um, between a million and uh, over two million uh, U.S. dollars could be saved, or per year this represents 200 to a half a million U.S. dollars when using the mass array or implementing the mass array in the way that that lab uh, was doing. And with this, I want to thank for your interest today, and we are open to taking your questions. Again, my name is Alexander Sartori. The contact information that you see um, below is, my co is for my colleague, Divya Nilam. She's the senior market manager in oncology and would be the point of contact for receiving email questions, or questions by email. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Sartori. We do have several questions. Our first question, does the test report identify approved treatments alongside detected mutations? So the, the, the test report, no, it, the test reports provide you the, um, the allele calls, so the mutations detected, and, uh, and significance, so a Z-score, so a probability of this mutation being, being real and being accurate. Thank you. Our next question, IPLEX HS, as I see it, contains 70 mutations. But these mutations only belong to five genes. Are you planning larger panels for the future? Well, we do have a few larger. We do have larger panels. Um, um, the choice of a panel is always a consideration and a consultation with many, many um, labs and many, many, um, many people. Um, our, I guess, a genus sweet spot is, is panel sizes between, well, in the, in the big tens to, to the low hundreds, um, really to make the panel cost effective and to, to, to put, uh, to derive sufficient information per sample um, during a, a single run, so really to make the panel cost effective enough. 
theoretically and technically, we could indeed do much larger panels. Thank you. Another attendee asks, by tumor tissue, do you mean the somatic mutation test? Yes, indeed. Yeah, I mean, this is this is what this is what mean U using t using tissue as a source rather than liquid biopsies. But yeah, this is what was meant. All right. Another person asks, what is the minimum and maximum throughput of the mass array? So the throughput really depends on on a number of criteria. Um, it, it depends on the panel. So we have seen, for instance, the, the ultra, ultraseq lung panel and the ultraseq EGFR panel. So they are, although you start from a single PCR, um, then when when detecting the variants, we um, we use um, a different fraction of the of the available space on our chip for the different panels. So a small panel for on a small panel use. You, um, using that example, on the, um, with, with that with that GFR panel, you could run uh, 96 reactions onto a single into a single run. Whereas for the larger lung panel, it is uh, it is eight reactions, so eight samples that can be operated. So th that that certainly is a criteria for throughput. Um, then Agena offers um, the mass array system in two uh, in two formats: so the 96 well format and the 384 well format. So, um, for instance, the SARS-CoV-2 panel that, that we just mentioned is a single plex panel, so it's a single reaction panel. And on the a, on the larger format mass array, you could actually achieve um, run up to uh, thousands of samples, 7,000 samples a day, or operate 7,000 samples a day. However, in an oncology routine lab where you uh, probably per uh, tumor type don't have more than a handful of samples a day or in two days, um, the mass rate can also be operated cost effectively because you can you can uh, you can also run on you run a couple of uh, a couple of samples in a single run. So throughput is extremely flexible and scalable. Excellent. Our last question: Are you working on any other assays for oncology? There is a number of panels actually in the pipeline. Um, I cannot disclose which these are. Um, I guess for that purpose, you um, use the information uh, of my colleague below really to uh, for for a more um, detailed email um, commun uh, co conversation. But indeed, we we always have a pipeline of panels that are under development at, at various stages, and we do have a larger menu under development. I can, I can confirm that. Well, I would like to thank you so very much, Dr. Alexander Sarturi, and our first presenter for today, Dr. Erwan Pankreas. I would like to thank Agena Bioscience for sponsoring today's event. And finally, I'd like to thank those of you who came and spent this time with us. We're in strange times, and our, our lives are being pulled in all different directions. So we're very grateful that you came and spent this time with us. So on behalf of BioIT World's Global Web Symposia Series, I'd like to thank you all so very much for coming, and stay safe. Bye-bye.